These men are sitting in the ballroom of a hotel that once hosted some of the most important men of the last 100 years. Presidents John F. Kennedy, Richard Nixon, and Harry Truman all dined in this room. Today, however, their seats are empty and have been for more than 30 years. This is the Penn McKee Hotel in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Its windows have been smashed out, its floors have rotted and collapsed, and chain-link fencing covers the only trace of its historical significance. It didn't have to be this way, but in its 100-year history, no one has taken steps to preserve what was once the swankiest hotel in the area. This video is a history of the Penn McKee Hotel, beginning and ending with fire. The Penn McKee Hotel was conceived following the worst disaster in the city's history. In 1923, a fire that began in the Hotel Schmidt caused the deaths of eight people and injured countless others. As a result, Businessmen and city officials resolved to build a new, fireproof hotel. To do so, they commissioned Benno Jansen, who was arguably Pittsburgh's most famous and successful architect. The building was constructed of solid concrete, steel, and brick. And by 1926, visitors could stay in any of its 100 rooms or attend events in its 700-person ballroom. Today, McKeesport is the site of some of the worst poverty in western Pennsylvania, but it wasn't always that way. At the time, the Roaring Twenties was in full swing, and McKeesport's commercial district was second in sales volume only to the city of Pittsburgh. The new hotel featured Gatsby-esque parties, complete with big band jazz, aristocratic guests, and fine dining. As the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette once noted, for the next four decades, if it happened in McKeesport, it probably happened at the Penn McKee. This included multiple visits from President John F. Kennedy, who first debated his eventual presidential opponent, Richard Nixon, inside the Penn McKee Hotel. While there, they debated the Taft-Hartley Act, some of the most controversial legislation of the day. The law would restrict certain actions by labor unions, such as operating so-called closed shops, meaning the exclusive hiring of union members. Essentially, local blue-collar workers felt that the government was overreaching and rolling back the protections that had been placed on their labor. President Harry Truman agreed, calling it a quote-unquote slave labor law, he attempted to veto it. It was harsh, punishing law, and was uh, in the attempt to take all the rights away from labor that they'd been enjoying. However, unrest resulting from a slowdown in manufacturing following World War II had influenced sentiment in Washington so much that the Congress handed me the taft Harper Labor Relations Bill after I'd vetoed it twice. They passed it over my veto. And the law is still in effect today. In 1952, Truman took this pro-labor argument to McKeesport itself, delivering a speech for the state's Democratic Senate candidate. <laughs> you have an excellent ticket here in Pennsylvania. Truman dined multiple times at the Penn McKee, first in 1944 and several more times after he had left office. These good times didn't last, however. In 1969, a newer, nicer Sheraton Motor Inn opened up down the street, complete with complimentary off-street parking in a heated pool. Soon, businessmen and travelers had left the Penn McKee behind, and when a fire erupted in an adjacent building, the hotel's appeal had declined drastically. Making matters worse, a raid on the hotel in 1980 found that a group of tenants were operating a drug and prostitution ring inside. In 1992, unable to recover from hits to both the building's structural integrity and its reputation, the owner filed for bankruptcy, and the Penn McKee has been vacant ever since. In the intervening three decades, there have been numerous announcements of efforts to revitalize the Penn McKee. At least once a year, a new renovation or demolition plan is proposed, only to be essentially dead on arrival. To even tear down the hotel could cost in excess of a million dollars, according to the mayor. This is something you hear time and time again when it comes to abandoned buildings. They're too expensive to redevelop and too expensive to knock down. In the meantime, the Penn McKee is shedding all traces of its past, rotting slowly, with few signs of its historical importance remaining. <laughs>